All right, guys, welcome back to uh, season two of On Base. We are uh, we're live in our in your Bleacher Report app, and today we have a very special, good-looking man. He is a two-time All-Star, two-time Gold Glove winner, and a World Series champ, Dansby Swanson. So, since we're back for season two, y'all know the game. It's called On or Off Base. Dansby, you know on, off base, and if you're in or out, that's what it is, right? All right, first, first thing. Chick-fil-A is better than in and out I'm going off base. Off? Why? Yeah. I mean... It's kind of a tough question off the bat. I'm a Popeyes guy. So, Popeyes? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a Popeyes what? guy. Yeah, I'm a Popeyes guy. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, hey, I got some Louisiana in the fam. That's <laughs> his, I'm a Popeyes guy. <laughs> so, Popeyes, so you yeah. went crazy for the, the chicken sandwich. No, that was, was that Popeyes? Hey, so we played, we played y'all the other day in uh, Glendale. And I don't want to say what we had after the game, but I, I went and stopped by Popeye's on my way home. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Popeye's guy. All right. Okay, next question. The Falcons are going to be a playoff team next season. I'm praying on base, brother. I'm You're praying. praying on base. Yeah, okay. I, so, they, they give me gray hairs, but I still support <laughs> them. I still love them. Okay, so who do you think their quarterback should be? I mean, I know there's like Kirk, Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields. Some other people coming up. He's, uh, going, he's, going to, he's going to Pittsburgh. I have a feeling it's going to be Kirk. Kirk I Cousins. was thinking Justin for a while. Right. But I'm thinking it's going to be Kirk. Kirk Cousins. His wife's from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of gotten some rumblings yeah. around, around town. But mm -hmm. I, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And best case is they kind of sit somebody to develop behind him. Mm -hmm. And then when he's done, just kind of free flow right into the next guy. Are, are you a fantasy guy? This was my first year playing fantasy football. The, and honestly, I just sponsored a team. I oh, didn't okay. even, you didn't even, I didn't do nothing. Yeah, I, I, did I don't like thing. fantasy football. I'm not like, just not into it. Yeah, I did the same thing. You just write the check and I actually got a check. Back. Lose money, lose money. It's I, lose I, money. I actually got a check back this year, which is really surprising. Good investment. <laughs> right. Okay, so next thing. Cowboy hats can be worn on any occasion. On base, brother. You're on base on that. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, exactly. Look at you, Look at you right there. You see that? I, I knew where we were going with that. Yeah, you're but on I'm base. But I'm on. I'm on. So you wear them like... No, I, no, I mean, that was my first time publicly sporting that thing. Mm, okay. So so you don't want to just, you know, your hair look good. I man. might. Well, You want to cover it? I mean, you... Brother, it depends on the day. Me. It really does. Mm -hmm. I don't... For anybody that wants to know hair care, I don't do anything. I just... You just woke up Wake like up. Honestly, <laughs> shower Good for you. Shower, hit the, you shower hit the road. Shower hit the road. Yeah, yeah. Dansby woke up like this. Okay, so what about this one? And this is huge with all sports, really. Mm -hmm. Georgia produces the best talent when it goes to states. Are you on base or off? I'm so on. On base. Yeah, I mean, and especially like a per capita kind of deal, right? Because mm -hmm. less people in California, less people in Texas. Florida's pretty good, but yeah. I think well-rounded. Georgia. Yeah, I really do. Them Georgia boys, them Southern boys, man, be just swole it's and just, just country yeah. strong. Yeah. Just move any type of weight. Yeah. You just got to pick the right sport. Yeah. And which is? That's why I'm playing baseball. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what about this? Chicago dogs are the best kind of hot dogs. Brother, I'm just going to have to say on base. Oh, yeah, you got it. Yeah, you have on to. On base. For sure, for sure. On okay, base. Okay, so let me, let me ask this. When you're sitting in the dugout mm -hmm. and you hear my man, the vendor, mm -hmm. yelling hot dogs. Mm -hmm. Am I craving one? Yeah, are you? No. Okay, so no. let me. Are, do you ever judge his, his, his call? Like, are you, do you ever say, like, man, you need to, to add some more umpting? Or, is it like, or do you? Like, let me, I no, just want to hear but yours. I will like, say when you, they're like, hey, cold ones, I'm like, hey, brother, <laughs> down here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear your hot dog. Yeah, like, so if it was me, like, hot dogs. 
Get your hot dogs. You'd say. That would be mine. I'd say, get them hot. Okay. Hot dogs, get them hot. <laughs> like that. I think that'd be mine. <laughs> All right. Last one. This offseason mm -hmm. was the most surprising offseason in MLB history. History? Was, or in the MLB since we've been, since we've been around. I would say on base, just because of almost like the roller coaster of it all, right? Mm -hmm. Like Shohei and, yep. and Yamamoto and like the contracts with that. And then you got all these other great players that are still kind of looking for jobs. Yeah. And then, you know, you got certain teams that are in, certain teams that are out, certain teams that are resetting the market and some that are staying so far away from it. And so it's, I'm... Yeah, I just think the the quality of player that's still out there is like pretty mind boggling. If you I, I agree it. with that, and you know, I don't even know what to do because it it's like to know that Blake Snell's not on the team. Yeah, you know two time, and, and it's not like Blake Snell's like two time Cy Young winner Blake Snell. You know what, I'm you know what I mean? Like so, but I mean, you know, it's different it's day and age. Yeah, it ain't got nothing to do with me. You know, it, it kind of. <laughs> It is what it is. But speaking of that, do you think there will ever be another man that uh, signs for $700 million? I got to be careful about how I answer this. Probably I mean, I'm not. sure at some You're talking point. talking about in baseball? Yeah, in baseball, in baseball. Probably not. I think what he does, and now that I get to see him every day, it's, it's probably one of the coolest things. Seeing, it's got to be. Yeah, seeing him go about his work. Um, seeing that he, he works, but he doesn't do anything more than everyone else, which lets me know <laughs> he's just better than everybody else. Yeah. It is what it is. Man, you I, know. I, I experienced a similar thing watching Ronald on a day-to-day -day okay. basis. Oh, yeah, there you go. Like, hey, explain that. Like, the guy, there's just tears. There's yeah. just levels. Yep. You know what I mean? And his physical gifts... And honestly, mental gifts. I've said this so many times. He doesn't get enough credit for the baseball instincts that he mm -hmm, has mm -hmm. and the ability to make adjustments. And I think that's what you're seeing as he's getting older is like learning the league, learning himself better, yeah. understanding how to, you know, develop a routine and these kinds of things. And then you just watch him go out there and it's like there's things that he physically can do that I could never dream no, of. No, I mean. Honestly. But when he hit that ball 121 – like, I could have hit it twice, and I ain't going to hit it that That's hard. what I'm saying. Like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's... Barely hit my driver like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know? And this guy's hitting a baseball. <laughs> All right, so now let's get to you guys, the Cubs. You hire Craig Council. Oh, we got a Cubs fan here. Hey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, you got Craig Council. How has mm -hmm. that been? He's been awesome, man. Like, Craig is just – He's one of the smarter baseball people I've been able to be around, but his ability to like communicate uh, with other guys to uh, almost like empower his players to be better and put us in positions to be better, whether that's uh, early work, whether that's you know our fundamental drills we're doing or whatever it is throughout the day, like it's all designed for us to get better. And I think that's just such a cool and indicative part of why he's been so good as a manager, right? Like he puts faith in players and he allows them to go make plays. And also I think, you know, just the in-game managing, he's obviously mm -hmm, mm -hmm. been proven to be one of the best. And I think guys have, uh, you know, everyone kind of sees that externally, but when you're internally, like you just kind of see who he is as a man and how much he, you know, takes pride in being a, a great manager. So playing with him, what, however many games, or mm -hmm. being with him through the spring so far, are there any rules or anything like that that he's implemented that you've really liked? The one thing I love is he allows – his big thing is, like, you're all grown-ups, mm -hmm. you know, like – You don't have to just – he's not micromanaging. Uh, right, right. He's, you know, everyone here understands what they need to get ready. Um, like I said, we have, we have kind of like a blend of days. So when we play home games, we have individual days. So we're, okay. we go to the field. I have a sheet. I just literally find my name, and it's got – you know, X, Y, and Z of what I'm doing for the day. And mm. I can, so it's hitting on the field at, let's say, 10 o'clock. Well, when I go hit on the field, it's me and one other guy. Today it was oh, me and Belly. Okay. We hit together and we like, 
got to do our routine on the field, like what we would normally do in the cage. We do that on the field, get machine on the field, whatever it is that you want. Why, why do you, you want. want to do that on the field, though? Why can't, what's wrong? Why, why wouldn't you do it in the cage? Because that's like your, it's almost he's giving you the opportunity to do whatever it is that you want. Like but you for you a, personally. Why do I like that? Yeah, why do you like hitting on the field? Like what, why, do you, why don't you hit it in the cage? When you get to go on the field, why, why do you like you, doing that? For me, it's a lot about like, number one, putting yourself a little bit in that like space, like being in a stadium, being able to see more uh, balls and pitches in a stadium, kind of getting that, uh, not competitive edge, but being able to get the backdrop, the, the, the layout and understanding when you're in a cage, you know this, when you're in a cage, you may hit a ball and you, you don't know where it goes. You don't know exactly where mm -hmm. it goes, but you get direct feedback when you're hitting on the field. Uh, so we, you know, we do a lot of that and then I'll have defense and I'll go over yep. the half field and do defense as you would know, Mr. Shortstop, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we do, we do defense and I get to do, run my defensive drills uh -huh. however I want okay. for the day. Yeah. And yep. then when we play road games, that's when we do our team fundamentals. We do, okay. you know, so we kind of like split the two, which has been, and that's something different awesome. that you hadn't, you so hadn't I've never done, done something like that before. Nice. I may have to, uh, may have to take that. <laughs> Speaking of, you got signed belly back, which that took a while. He was another player that was kind of in that boat now that he signed. What did, I, I think he mentioned he FaceTimed you. The, or, or I think I was. This guy. It was, <laughs> tell me about that, please. All right. So uh, we were at, you, I think you had shown up before yep, I got there I was at there, Freddie's I was birthday you. party. Uh -huh. So I'm standing there, you know, kind of minding my own business, and Belly comes running up and, you know, just giving me a hard time. And so we're hanging out all night. But I could tell he was being, like, awkward. You know what I mean? I could tell <laughs> Belly was being awkward because he didn't want to say anything because he didn't know for certain how okay. fast things were coming together. And I went to bed early. I was tired. I went to bed, like, 9.15 that mm. night, which is not my style. I'm a little bit of a, you know, a night owl. Mm -hmm. So I'm in bed, and I keep my phone on loud because my wife is currently in Chicago, and so I keep it on loud in case she needs anything or whatever in the middle of the night. Trying to be a good husband here. What and you gotta do? So my phone starts ringing. And I like panic. I like get up, thinking it's my wife calling me. Flip my phone over because I was keeping it away from my bed, and it's Cody Bellinger's FaceTiming me. <laughs> Did <laughs> no, you answer? I, no, I, I literally said to my, I said, I ain't talking to him. Right now. <laughs> I hung up. I hung up. No I clicked it off. Man, seven or you know like six fifteen rolls around the next morning. Belly's blowing my phone up again, dude. Woke me up twice. <laughs> twice in one night, woke me up. And I was like, man, I got to answer this. And he's like, Lieutenant. That's what he, he's like, Lieutenant, we're going to be teammates again. Uh, you know, and I was like, yeah. oh. I was like, now I get it. Uh, <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, so I, uh, I do want to switch gears here. Uh, being named, what you brought up earlier, the shortstop, that was, uh, I hadn't even really got to speak on it. Because when I'm at work, like, I'm really focused. And when the media is coming to talk to me, like, you know, when you, like, I, I don't mind talking to them. You know, they're awesome. They got to do what they got to do. But, like, I'm also at work, like, you know. So I just wasn't really, like, ah, in the mood to, to really get into emotions and feelings. But now I am. So when I was named the shortstop, that was super special to me. Like, I hadn't played shortstop. And knowing that I was going to play shortstop every day since I was 18. And, you know, I'm 31. That's a long, that's a long time to not play every day shortstop. And so, I'm, you know, this is a dream come true. And so uh, that, was a, actually, that was probably one of the coolest moments of my life, knowing that, man, I get to do it again. You know, I get to, I get to do what I, I did back when I was 18 years old, you know. Well, I mean, like, being a shortstop, I've always felt this way as, like, it's just like the position. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it is the position, and there's so much pride associated with that, and there's so much, like, great history mm -hmm. surrounding shortstops throughout the history of our game. Yeah. And I took pride in it when I was, you know, I've been playing shortstop since I was four. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. just, like, there's such a pride associated with, with that. I mean, I grew up watching a video called Superstar Shortstops. I don't know if anybody else in here has seen it. It's on YouTube actually now. <laughs> but I had it on my VHS. I watched that thing every day, dude. Every day. It's like an hour and 15 minutes. And, and the whole, well, the whole premise of it was to like highlight A-Rod in okay. Seattle, 
obviously Derek in New York and Nomar in Boston. Okay. And it was centered around those three guys, but it, it hinted on, like, it touched literally the history of the shortstop position, like Ernie Banks, Honus Wagner, Louis Aparicio. Like, you start naming all the dudes that played, and you start understanding, like, the pride that is associated mm -hmm. with playing shortstop, and, like, that's just what I grew up wanting to do. And, and what's really cool is, like, to your point, it is it's the the position, right? And you know, I a, a lot of pressure is on you. You're the shortstop. Like you're really the best defender out here. You're like the center of the. You're the, the center field. of attention. Yeah. Great. And, Mookie's and, gonna take a freaking all star thing. No, right? no, 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 no. I would oh like to be there gosh, with you. Though. I just thought about that. I'm about no, to get off no, the show. I know. No, 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 no. Nobody vote for him this year, okay? <laughs> He's a utility guy, yeah. all right? <laughs> um, but no. Um, uh, okay, so do you have any advice for me? Because this is, I mean, I, I know I, pl I played, I, I play, mm -hmm. how, how many years do you have in the show? This will be my eighth. So I'm at, this is going to be my tenth year. So, you know, not that much time, a little more time. But I haven't played shortstop. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> I'm, I'm a rookie. At I'm good at giving advice to like kids when it comes to playing shortstop. We can save it for all the right. end, huh? You can think no, about I, it. We can right, save I got it. it. You got it. All yeah, right, I got it. it. I got it. You're a great athlete. I've always considered shortstops to be the best athletes. So just go be an athlete. You know how to catch a ball. Yeah. Just go catch it. Just go catch it. And just throw go it. catch it, bro. That's it. And, and, that, it. and you may not like that. That's but that's yeah. most people that play. Especially, like, they do all the fundamentals. Like, they got to get outside the box and just, like, hey, remember, you're an athlete. Just mm -hmm. got to go trust what you do. Go trust your instincts. That, that was, I mean, that's, that's, probably, that's probably the worst advice ever. How about the trust your instincts? All right, there we go. That's better. Trust, trust my instincts. Yeah. God, I know not to ask you about that now. Okay, so let's go back to young Dansby. So you say you're playing shortstop since you were four, right? You get through high school. When did you uh, When did you know, like, oh, I'm, I have a chance in getting drafted? This is in high school, not going to college. Did you have a chance in getting drafted? Dude, I wasn't very good. You weren't good? No. Oh, let's, so take me back to young Dan's being why you weren't so, Not why you weren't good, but the time that you weren't good. I, I, always, I was always very undersized. So I was always, like, the smallest kid on the team. Mm -hmm. My dad was a coach, and really helped me understand the game at like a different level than most you know it's not the like throw it hard hit it hard mm -hmm. you know all that kind of stuff it was like like the intricacies of the game so nice i learned work. that at like a very young age and what helped was my brother and sister are nine and seven years older than me so every time i would like play or compete in anything my whole family college athletics mom played tennis mm -hmm. in college dad played baseball brother played baseball sister played softball so like everyone played so I grew up on a field mm -hmm. so when I was out there running around I'm out there running around when I'm you know seven eight years old with 14 and 15 year old kids mm -hmm. so like I had to learn how to like compete harder than everybody else and to like know little strategies to be better mm -hmm. so when I got like into high school and everything, I was good at those things. Okay. But my overall like physical talent level wasn't that high, but like I felt like my, like almost like mental and emotional talent was high. Okay. And so as I started to grow and like gain weight and you start to lift weights and got stronger, I started to become a little bit of a better player. And honestly, the, one of the big reasons I went to Vanderbilt was nobody else wanted me, honestly. Like, no, oh. no, yeah, nobody else nobody wanted me. Nobody wanted yeah, you, and then, yeah. but Vandy? Yeah. So, okay. my, I, it's crazy, I know. <laughs> so, my uh, high school summer ball coach, East Cobb Yankees, I'm sure you probably played against him, yeah? <sighs> uh, we're going to get to that. So, I wanted to go to Georgia Tech. It's kind of like a little bit of a Georgia Tech feeder program, and... He called Danny Hall, who's the head coach, still the head coach, and basically said, hey, do you want this guy? I think he's got a chance to be really, really good. And they basically told me that I wasn't good enough. Mm. So I said, all right. My parents went to Troy. Uh, it's in Alabama. And they knew the coach, and it was like, I was probably going to Troy to play oh, okay. baseball. And Coach Beavers, 
he said, just like give me a second. Like I'm going to call Coach Corbin at Vanderbilt because like I really believe in you and I think that this would be a great spot for you. So they said, all right, James, like if you think – if you believe in this kid, we'll give him a chance. We'll come watch him play. He came and watched me play literally first game out of basketball season. I hadn't played baseball in six months, you know. <laughs> first game out. But the one thing, and this is kind of what got me there, was they loved how I interacted with my teammates. Mm -hmm. They loved, like, my just kind of, like, passion or energy or whatever you want to call it, leadership. And that got them to come back a second time. And then they mm -hmm. thought that there was some potential that, like, physically I could get to that point once I stopped playing basketball. And so – I went to Vanderbilt, just felt like it was where I was supposed to be. Right. And then kind of like the rest is history, honestly. And at, at Vandy, like, how, how much do you think you developed? Do you think, like, it was a huge difference from when I first got to Vandy to where you got drafted or it was just kind of seamless? It wasn't – you didn't change too much. Obviously, you got bigger, stronger, and better, mm -hmm. right? But was it – because the way you're saying, it was like you weren't that good. You were smart, but physically you weren't that good. And so did Vandy clean all that up for you? Yeah, I just like – it was the competition because we were, we were really good. Yeah, you and were. so day in, day out, I'm facing Walker Bueller, I'm facing Carson Fulmer, I'm facing, you know, guys that have been in the big leagues. And, like, I had to just work, 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 work. The hitting coach at the time, his name's Travis Jewett. He's actually the hitting coach at USC. He, uh, he just taught me so much about hitting and, like, kind of was able to bring out the not only the competitiveness but like just kind of the bat to ball skill and like really helped me develop like a hitterish skill and then I just kind of like took it and ran with it and then, honestly and then yeah. it was over with after that so let's let's backtrack a little bit because I can't let you just speed past it so hooping your nickname I, I wish I was like six eight brother I, <laughs> your boy be in the NBA <laughs> You got your nickname is Three Point Swanson. High school, yeah. Obviously, we know how you got that, but like, who, where did it, how did it originate? Like, what happened to where you got that? Or did you, is it self appointed? It was not self appointed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> golly. Could you imagine? Uh, that, that's hilarious. Yeah, everybody, I'm Three Point Swanson. No. <laughs> every, every home game, our, uh, you know, the guy does the announcing that's like, you know, coming in the game, number, you know, three, so-and-so. Every time I'd make a three, he would say, three-point Swanson. Like, he would oh, announce okay, it. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so it just kind of like, I guess, somewhat uh, caught. Because you did. Like, yeah, just like caught on. You shot 44% from the three-point. Yeah, hey, your boy could. That's ridiculous. Yeah, your boy could. Let so it how fly. You, so, Ultimate so, green light, brother. Just let it fly. So you shot 44% from the three-point mm, line. Mm. You, like. Were they playing? They were playing. Were they playing defense? No. Yeah, bro. They were playing hey, defense. Range is unlimited. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. No, I mean it. I, I've always was a pretty good shooter, and they drew up a lot of plays so that I could get open looks. And we, I mean, we were we were pretty good. We were pretty good. And who did you play with? Any guys that are that made it to the league or mm -mm. were known? Young and scrappy, Young small and scrappy. And scrappy. You guys yeah. just pressed the whole time. And yeah, pretty much. So tell me about that because I went through the same thing, right? Uh -huh. We hoop and then went into baseball. So I'm going to tell you what I did and then I want to know what you did. So on game days, my high, school, my, my high school basketball coach and my high school bowling coach, they were friends, thank goodness. And so... Bowling, bowling is called matches, not games, by the way. So they're not bowling games, they're mm -hmm. bowling matches, just so you know. So I would have a bowling match at 3.30. Got out of school at 2.05. Bowling match at 3.30, and my basketball games were at 7 o'clock. And so at home, I would go bowl, come back, hit in the cage, then go play in a basketball game. And that was kind of what I did throughout basketball season. That was the only way. I didn't take any ground balls. I didn't do anything. But I would just hit in the cage when I could. And we're talking once a week, twice a week, I would, mm -hmm. I would hit, you know, because we're playing basketball. I love basketball. Like, I'm like you. I wish I was 6'5", six, six, you know, 6'6". Six, six. 
then I'd be playing basketball. But so trying to tell me how you what how you kind of stayed in shape because we're in high school. We ain't thinking about, you know, honestly, things. I've always kind of like whatever I'm doing and invested in, like I just do it. Okay. I do that. And then you don't. And I, then you don't. I focus all on that. Funny story. Like when I was growing up, I'd be in basketball season. I'd be like, hey, mom, hey, dad. Like, I'm not playing baseball anymore. And they're like, <laughs> they're like, son, yeah, you are. I play baseball, bro. And I'd be like, I don't think I'm going to play basketball anymore. Uh, yeah, I was like okay. one of those. Like, I was like all in okay. and loved it. Okay. And then I would just move to the next season. In high school, I would, I would hit some on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But because of just like the basketball schedule and everything, I would just kind of do basketball from September to end of February and then hop right into baseball, baseball. from – March to August. Do you find it weird, like kind of uh, only playing one sport? You talking about just like kids in general now? Like no, for you. Like so for me, I I find my pickleball. Absolutely love playing pickleball mm -hmm. with my family, my wife, all our friends. We love playing pickleball at the house. We shoot shoot around basketball. We'll I mean, whatever sport, throw football. I mean, doing one sport is like I can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people can only can do it. Like you can just play baseball and then they can go do other things. I can't do it. So, and you're, I feel like we're very similar. Is that weird for you, just doing just one thing? Yeah, it's it's almost like a perspective thing. Like you need something to like break the cycle, mm -hmm. like the monotony. Because I mean, we play every day, we'll especially. Play every day. Like basketball is always the the fun getaway, right? Like the hey, I'm really struggling at the plate. <laughs> the last thing I need to do is think more about hitting. Right, I need right. to go get it off my mind. I need to go shoot around. I need to find a gym. Uh, ping pong. Yep. Yep. Uh, soccer, which I let me tell you, soccer. brother. Terrible. I don't I'm, use my feet. I'm terrible. My hands. I'm terrible. <laughs> Mal, Mal won me to garter one time. Dog. And, uh, did she nutmeg you? No, she didn't. Mm. I, I mean, I got That's a little fine. physical. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, got, yeah. I was like down in a stance. She's like, this is not basketball. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's go back. So let's keep on going. Now we, you get, you're at Vandy and mm. you end up getting drafted by the Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. You got drafted by the Diamondbacks and you got traded. To, to the hometown team. Mm -hmm. Tell me, take me through that. I mean, obviously, you didn't, you didn't really play. Did you even play with the Diamondbacks? I played like 20 games in short season and then a little bit of instructs, and that was it. Traded. Yeah. So when you knew you were going to the Braves, like how did that make you feel? Because you were going home. Man, it was, uh, it was a really hard time, actually. Like when oh, wow. I first got traded. Um, just the trade or yeah I mean I was I was 21 right was at a place in Vanderbilt that I literally gave my blood sweat and tears to all my loyalty and love was somewhat considering like going back like that's how much mm. I loved it mm. you know what I mean like mm -hmm. in my in the back of my mind somewhere I'm like man like just finish it out right like right. get my degree be able to be with coach Corbin and somewhat needed to be convinced to leave. Mm -hmm. So when Arizona, you know, when that whole thing happened, kind of got convinced to leave by them and some of their people, right? Like talk about the vision of the future and, you know, this, that, and the other, and I was a part of that. So I immediately switched all my, you know, kind of not switched my loyalty, but you mean that, started to that, give that love, a lot that passion. of, yeah, towards the organization and then, it's just gone like that. And so that, that like, hurt me personally. Mm -hmm. Just be, It didn't matter where I was going. In the moment, it did not matter where I was going. Just because it hurt, man. Right. Like, you feel, once again, like you're kind of told, like, I'm not good enough, right? Like, they're getting rid of me. And, you know, I get traded that night. Dude, I, this is not an exaggeration, by the way. I had 300, 350 text messages Mm. Over 150 phone call, like it was. Oh, that. And so immediately, fine. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is awful. Yeah, like this right. is yeah. this is not this is not what I had written for my life. And I could just kind of like feel this like peace though after the like after I had some time to like settle down. 
that God was kind of saying, like, nah, like, watch me work. You know what I mean? Like, watch mm-hmm. me work. And it turned out to be, like, one of the biggest blessings of my life right. uh, to get traded, to be back home, be around family. You know, it's kind of how I was led to meet my wife and just so many different things that happened because of that. Like, I will, I will forever be grateful for my time, you know, in Atlanta. So. And then you had Wash when you got there, too. Had Wash. Can you um, – I, I know a lot of people don't really know – well, they may know Ron Washington, but they don't know, like, Ron Washington, the guru. And you don't have to get into any details and whatnot, but like how much did he help change you as a shortstop? Because I know, I'm not saying you weren't good when you first got in the league, you've always been an elite shortstop, but he also made you mm-hmm. really good too, you know? The belief factor. Like people, when people ask about Wash, I always say there's, there's a couple of people, I mean, you could do it too, that you can point to in your life and say, that person believed in me and it helped me believe in myself right. more. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Like there's always a couple people like throughout our time and he's one of those for me. Mm-hmm. And I think he's one of those for so many other people. And that's why I'm so happy that he's getting another opportunity because he, he just embodies so much positivity. He embodies so much knowledge. And I mean, he's been in the game for over 50 years. Oh yeah. So he, like, he embodies everything. so much wisdom. Uh, there's like a fatherly love to him. Uh, there's an everyday passion and energy, mm-hmm. a desire to win. It's like all the things that, you kind of wish you had in your own personality, you know, yeah, like that's it. him. <laughs> nice. Okay. So then you're playing and you're balling out and now you're becoming the leader of the Braves. And now you're the leader of one of the leaders of the club of the Cubs, that leadership status. How does that, how do, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you embody that? I felt since I was little, honestly, I felt like God gave me this ability to lead. And I never really understood it as a kid. Didn't understand it really in high school. People just always kind of like looked to me. If there was mm-hmm. like a question, it, I'd get asked. So you it's know, just, maybe it's like your aura. And when I went to Vandy, Coach Corbin really helped me like, he kind of took that raw like leadership component and helped me understand it more at a deeper level of just what it means, how to understand other people, how Mm -hmm. to empathize with other people, how to serve other people, and just helped me, like, like, kind of that bit inside of me. It's like, I know that this is what I'm supposed to do, but help me understand it more. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I've always taken pride in it, you know, ever since I've, ever really, ever since I was young, but now that I kind of understand some more about it, just... Just I love doing it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love you it. it you don't even bat an eye at it. Like if yeah, something goes wrong or not wrong, but whatever, you you like the first person to walk up. Like I'll I'll handle it. Whatever it is. Yeah, I just and it's so much more than that too. You know what I mean? Like it's understanding instead of being so locked in on myself, being able to like look to the side and yep. see that person struggling and just you go, gotta go handle and that. go say like, hey man, like how you doing? Mm-hmm. And then the amount of things that come out of that conversation that helps that person play better. And then you look over here and you can say, Hey man, like I just see this, this going on, like in your swing, like you were telling me earlier in the year that Mm -hmm. when you do this, you're really good. Like, I don't think you're doing that right now. And then they start doing it and they start playing well again, you know, like serving other people and helping them be a better version of themselves. is like something I love that you think, do you think that that helps you play better? Absolutely. Because I think it, when we put so much pressure on ourselves to perform, whether it's baseball at our own jobs whatever or our family is. or whatever, we, we kind of like become a shell of ourselves. But I think the more we give to other people, the more it allows us to, like, that's who we're supposed to be as givers. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that it just helps free me up to not worry about my performance as much as other people being taken care right. of. And when you make other people happy... Right. You, in turn, make yourself happy. Right. So let's go back to 2021 when you won the World Series. And I know there's a lot, a, a ton of memes out there and a ton of people, Braves fans especially, that when Matzik struck, struck out me, Pujols, and Sousa. Uh, Sousa, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and address that. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. Tyler Matzik was throwing 1,000 miles an hour. 
He was throwing rise balls at a thousand, and he was throwing it right down the middle, and nobody could hit it. Nobody, nobody hit it. Never seen something so, like that. It was unbelievable. Like, look, listen, I tried, y'all, <laughs> but man, I remember, was, hey, I remember you struck out. You hit your bat. You're like, yeah, I believe, man, I, I knew I, it was coming. I mean, he threw me. You know what's coming? Yeah, fastball. Yeah, he was. He, that's what <laughs> yeah. he's doing. Yeah. And just throwing it. And he was letting that thing rip, man. And it was it was coming in hot. Yeah. And so special. For those out there that wanted to know, there you go. <laughs> he tried. I tried. <laughs> yeah, I tried. <laughs> but take me through that. Uh, so you beat us, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're going into the World Series. This is your first time in the World Series, right? Mm -hmm. Take me through that. How did that feel? Like you're here and you know, it's the end of the season. Because at the end of the season, it's like, man, I'm ready to go home. You done played for eight months, it's right? And, but it, now you're in the postseason. It's mm -hmm. like, nah, you got to – how did you find that extra energy? And then when you were in the World Series, how was it? You know, I mean, you've been a part of it. But I want to hear yours. I know, but what I'm saying is it is by far the most stressful time of your life. Oh, my gosh. Like, wow. Yeah. It really is. Like, I, I had to have lost 10 pounds. For sure. I don't eat when I get stressed. I do not. And I was losing weight. Yeah. yeah. But I remember, it's funny, the, la the day that we won the World Series, I remember it was like the first time in three weeks that I like was able to like eat, eat a full mm -hmm. meal before the game. I was like, hey, man, we got this. Yeah. You know, I'm like, man, I'm yeah. like oh, yeah. feeling good. But it was just, it's wild. People say the World Series is different. It's different. The, we go out there for our first workout and there's 300 reporters on the field. Mm -hmm. It's like, this mm -hmm. is this has never happened. I've never seen this. Like, our NLCS matchup is a big matchup. Was, you know, there's people there, but it's not, not like that though. No, you show up, everybody and their mama's there, and <laughs> <laughs> everybody and their mama's there, and it. But it's it's one of those like you just embrace it, man. You just embrace it, and it is what it is. But the the rules aren't changed. You right. know what I mean? The rules don't mm -hmm. change. Still, we got nine. They got nine. Let's see who you know. Can get 27 outs the fastest. Yeah. I think the only real difference is that you're just playing against a team that's probably just as hot as you are. Yeah. And that's that's what makes it hard. It's not you've probably played them now with the schedule you have played them, so you kind of know what their pitchers are. You know their hitters and all other stuff. But it's like if you go if you play against us in June and you sweep us, and then we come back in September, we could be a Hot, just because we're hot. We're completely different. different I mean, team. that was us that year, right? Right. Like, it was... You guys got hot. We didn't get above 500 until August. Until late. And then all of a sudden, it was like, we could do no wrong. Pitching staff, pitch calling. We hit a bajillion home runs. Mm -hmm. Played good... Like, we just could do no wrong. I mean, you saw a similar thing with, you know, Texas and Arizona. Yep. Like, postseason started, and it was just game on. And that's a lot of... Which it. is so cool about our game like it's yeah. not like that in other sports no. it's just not not as much maybe hockey some i don't know you've seen that hockey, a little so. bit in hockey i'm kind of talking out of my yeah, right whatever. Now. that's what it's for but like we're, we're i mean football talk. if you got the bear quarterback probably win the game mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're in the nba if you have a couple stars probably win. Yep. baseball's not like that no it doesn't matter no it's somebody could just be hot and and yep. that's it so a year or two before you Signed with the Cubs, you were the Braves. I was at second base. Where were, were we in Atlanta or in LA? We were in LA. And every time I'm at second base, whenever you guys are at games, I always give my boy a hug, talk to him, check on him, make sure everything is cool. And I was just hollering at him. And I think Mal had just got traded mm -hmm. to, to Chicago. Chicago. And it was a thing. Like, I didn't know. There was no reason for me to know that. But it was on um, Instagram and whatnot. You know how they make stuff up. Like, Danzy's probably going to sign in Chicago because his wife's in Chicago. Or his right. girl's in Chicago. So, I'm going to be the guy that asks. Did, when she got traded to Chicago, did that play a part in you signing in Chicago? Now, I know you had other offers, and I know you got to do what's best for her. But did that play a, did that play a part? I mean, it, it was definitely – there was there's definitely some truth to it, right? Especially we had just gotten married, um, and we had been doing long distance for five years, mm -hmm. four or five years. And it was more – the easiest way to describe it, it was more of like the cherry on top. Okay. Right? Like we had, we had spent so much time praying about the situation, 
didn't know what was going to happen and just both of us felt like that we were just led to be there mm. um you know and so many th there was just there's so many other things to the right, whole story sure, right sure. that we can't fully get into but yeah, it was just one of those things like we just felt led that we were supposed to be in Chicago. You know, we still call it Atlanta home, like we're there in the off seasons, and but we just felt like Chicago is where we were supposed to both continue our careers. I mean, because she just resigned back in Chicago. Oh, as nice. Well. Okay. Um, Shout out to her. Yeah, but I mean, I'd be lying if I said that we didn't like look at all the places across the country that had like both a soccer and a mm, baseball team. Yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. And start, you know, if if that was even a possibility or not. Yeah. yeah. Well. Okay. So. And I want to get to, I think you, you had mentioned that the first year with the Cubs was a, a really, was difficult for you. Mm -hmm. Can you, uh, do you mind sharing kind of why that was difficult for you? Uh, I'm a pretty, I'm a homebody, man. Okay. Like I really am. Uh, I love my people. I don't really get outside of my comfort zone, like in life very often. Just, I like what I like. Do what I like. That's about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just like. But Chicago is dope. So No, but so go to a new situation. Don't really have any friends. Okay. Yep. Drew Smiley's there, who I played mm -hmm. with for a year in Atlanta. Ian Happ's there, who we got drafted same year. Just, you know, you come up in the minor leagues yeah. playing against the same yep. guy. Yep, so that's, that's your homeboy. But appointed homeboy. That was about it. So and so... And he's a pitcher. Into, he's, uh, Drew, is who you really knew, was a pitcher, so right. you really didn't get to see him at all. Right. And then Happer's an outfielder. Yep. You know, so it was just, it was very uncomfortable for me. And um, you, do, do, you, do you feel like that, actually, from the outside looking in, knowing you now, the leadership quality, that's probably, you couldn't because you didn't know anybody. It, it was tough. It was tough. Like, I felt, I felt like a fish out of water. You know, like, First time in Arizona spring training, mm -hmm. new team, playing for a new manager, contracts, like all these things that were just so foreign to me. I'd never experienced them before. I'm newly married, right? Mm -hmm. Like just all these different life events that are supposed to happen sporadically, not all in the same year, happened in the same year. And then I don't know how many of you guys follow soccer, but so my wife gets hurt. She tore a patella tendon and... So that happened maybe the second week of the season. Mm. So you move towards that, okay, surgery. I'm having to, you know, obviously I'm taking care of her, uh, spending the majority of my days at the house, pretty much showing up to play the game and then going back home. Right. Like there was a lot of just kind of like, are you sure you're good to play today? It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. You know, there's a lot of late night wake ups to make sure that she's t taking her medications. And then when y'all were in town, she, uh, her knee had gotten infected after yeah, surgery. Yeah, because you were sleeping at the hotel. I, I was sleeping at the hospital. Oh, the man at the hotel. Yeah. Hospital, yeah. Uh, so her knee had gotten infected, so she had to get a second surgery, and that was when y'all were in town. Mm -hmm. So I was sleeping at the hospital, you know, taking her in the, I took her, you know, 5 a.m. for our game mm. there, surgery, VJ, who's the greatest travel secretary of all time, has a car waiting for me so that the car can take me from the hospital to the game, go and play y'all, go immediately back from the, from the really? game, back to the hospital. It was just, it was that all year. Okay. You okay. know, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. the challenges that come with that, but like, man, I could, I could not be more grateful for those like real times. Like that's like real life, mm -hmm. you know, and like being so grateful for those moments because it, really really helps shape who you are yep and being in that situation that well i say a young age i just hit 30 but <laughs> you know newly married and just all those things like that was that was a very much a blessing in disguise and obviously we got through it and she's healthy and you know she's got her first game uh actually in a week nice, first nice. game back from from knee surgery nice. so yeah you're gonna be locked in on yeah it. You got you to gotta be locked in. I'll be locked right. in, brother. Yeah, okay. So what's it like playing in Wrigley? I, I'll tell you, when I, my first time going to Wrigley was awesome. It was, it was a very the, – uh, the playing surface is really good. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere is really good. Um, I mean, outside of just it being old, right, which is 
nothing you can do about that. It's really awesome playing mm-hmm. in Wrigley Field. So I want to hear like your experience playing, being the hometown hero. I mean, it's a, uh, it's about as good as it gets, right? Like there's, there's a few places in baseball that are about as good as it gets, and it's definitely on that list. Mm-hmm. The fans are amazing. They show up early. They stay after. They just want the Cubs to win. Honestly, like the vibe is they just want the Cubs to win. Right. That's it. They want to <laughs> uh, have a good time and let the Cubs win. <laughs> you know, like they sing Go Cubs Go after the game. Yeah. And it's just a whole vibe. And like Chicago summers are amazing. There's oh, endless yeah. places to eat. Oh. The ivy, when the ivy grows in, it's beautiful. And they say it's just, it's, it's, you talk about aura, like, it's in the, how many of y'all have been? Is there, it's like literally in the middle of a neighborhood. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, Wrigley. Most yeah. stadiums now are set off on their own property. Yeah. Like, they have their own big, set. no, like, Wrigley is like in a neighborhood. Yeah. You just walk, you know, you walk on the dog, like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. Wrigley right there. Wrigley like, Park, yep. That's like, exactly what There's that ugly number that's seven cool. up that's on that poster. It, that's what makes it neat, though, because it's different. Exactly. I, don't think I don't think any other park but is Boston's really. similar. It's got the similar, like, oh, I guess, yeah. No, like it's not in a park, but yes. You, you, yes. Yeah. It is by playing in Boston. We're saying, we're saying the same yeah. thing. <laughs> okay, so give me your f- top three. Top three. Best, best hair in baseball. Hair? Hair. I thought you were going to say hitter. That was going to no, be. No, hair. Mm-mm. I don't know which one's harder. <laughs> yeah, you know who's got good hair? It just popped in my mind because he's on the Dodgers. Tyler Glass now. Glass has some hey, really he's got some good hair. hair. He got some good hair. He's so got is that some one? Good hair. I'll, is that I'll one give him one. It doesn't have to be not one, two, three. It could just it's your top three. I'll give him. He's one of the three. Okay, Glass. Glass does have Who a good else? set of hair. See, this is tough. I'm trying to think here. Can anybody like, throw out some suggestions here? Zach Gallen has has some good hair. Out Outman has some really good hair. Um, Bryce, yeah, Harp. He does the when he puts his helmet on. Oh. Yeah, no, he. See, I, I don't make the top three. That's all right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I a, used to. Look good I used uniform, to have bro. a little That's fro, a, man. I, um, I was cute in my fro. Ah, Lee. So I cut. Come on. There you go. There's some inspiration. Yeah, give me some suggestions here. I'm not even on the list, guys. Hey, Sean Manea, though, my man. He's, he has some nice hair. He's got. But some, he he is Samoan. Is he Samoan? Believe so. So he cut it. That's a oh, he cut it. So he he can't fall. He can't. He's not in the top three anymore. You know who I'm? No, I'm not going to give. I'm not going to give him any props because he. I'd never hear the end of it. <laughs> The other two hey, more. I will say Jorge Alfaro. He has some really now nice that hair. he's like on the team. Nice hair. My man's got some good hair. Okay, that's two. He really does. You don't think you make the top three, brother? I can't put myself in the top three. Okay. I just called myself three points Swanson earlier. I'm not yeah. gonna <laughs> call myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that okay. about myself. So you just got two. You know, there's there's nobody. That we can really get. I, I mean, out. I'll put Bryce in there. I think Bryce Bryce has a really good set yeah. of hair. No, like it's a it's a. Qual- like it's just quality hair. So, so, so you don't like when you shower. You don't have to wash it every day. Like, what do you? No, honestly, this is so bad. I have my wife has to remind me to wash my hair. So, so she's like, "Have you washed your hair recently?" I was like, "She's like, when's the last time?" I said, "She goes, yeah, you should probably wash uh, it." All right. Mm, okay. Well, all I right. gotta wash mine because mine is just skin. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. If my skin will get dirty. Yeah. You know. So, all right. Um, let's take some fan questions. Anybody got questions? But I do have a question first. We're going to hit the, right. we got a Bleacher Report app. We're going to go back and forth, guys. What position do you think uh, is the QB of the infield? I think that's definitely shortstop. But what do you, what do you think? The Bleacher Report app asks. I would, I would say the shortstop Why? position uh, because I think they truly have control of everyone on the field. The catcher is – the catcher might be the most important, mm-hmm. but I don't think that they're full on directing. Like, no. brother, I'm telling people to move this, that, and the other all the time. And whether you want to say, like, one of them's a quarterback, one of them's the center, you know what I mean? Okay, like, who's yeah, doing yeah. the line coverages? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's, but I would, I would say the shortstop, just because they have a little bit more control. And obviously, like, the catcher's not going to, like, get up and, like, walk around and right, start right, telling yeah, people yeah. to go certain places. Hey, uh, huge fan. Uh-huh. 
It's what, a two-parter. What's your name, my man? My name's Antonio. Antonio, all right. Nice Antonio. to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, so it's a two-parter. First part is you're going to be playing in Korea in about a week and a half. How do you feel about playing an international series like that? And then part two is for both of you guys. If you could play anywhere in the world, uh, where would you want to play? All right, so I'm going, going to Korea. I'm actually super excited about Korea. I want... I really want to, I really want to taste the food. I want to see the culture. Uh, I just want to Korea was never a, a bucket list thing, but getting to go is a blessing and I'm going to thoroughly enjoy it. Now, I am not going to enjoy 14 hours on a plane. <laughs> that part I I mean, there's you nothing don't like, I can do you don't like flying, do you? I, it's not that I'm scared to fly. I don't uh, like if you know me, I don't sit down for more than like an hour. If I sit down for more than an hour, I'm asleep. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I'm getting up. Like, if I'm at home and I sit down, I'll just get up and go put some balls in the back or go shoot basketball or go throw darts with my wife or go play ping pong and just hit the ball against the wall by myself. Like, I got to do something. Mm -hmm. So uh, being locked on a plane for 14 hours, I'm, uh, we're going to be, we're gonna be yeah, in a little bit of trouble. Good. Yeah. But, uh, you know. So if you could play any, anywhere. Anywhere. The second I, part. You know what? The, I, this is gonna, I'm going to go first because it's in my head. I, I want to go first. I, I think I want to get one of those big old cruise boats. <laughs> Craig Kimball, shout out to you, Craig. I'm going to give you this credit. He gave me this idea. I think it's a great idea. I don't think it's possible, but great idea. And take one of those big cruise boats and put a stadium on it and play in the middle of the Antarctic Ocean or something. I don't know. That that's that's my uh, maybe that, not that ocean. That's probably that sounds that cold. That would be. That's that's what I want to do. So. I think I'd opt out. Um, <laughs> let's see. Great place to play. Honestly, I would love to see what it'd be like to play like in Japan. Just because of like the baseball culture, mm, and the love for baseball. Okay. Uh, so I played. I actually played in Cuba before. Okay. Incredible. Played in the Dominican Republic. Amazing. So just kind of switching cultures. Like I think playing in Japan would be pretty awesome. Just like the love for the game over there is. It's amazing. I think that would yeah. be cool, man. I really, I, I agree. So we'll see. Maybe, maybe one day. Maybe one day. All right. Next question. Next question. What do I say? Uh, let's start with your name, my man. What's your name? Uh, my name's DeAndre. Nice to meet you, Where brother. Where are you from? Los Angeles. Oh, Los right. Angeles, uh, nice. Right. What's your question, brother? Uh, how do you feel about the minor leaguers hitting a bunch of home runs? In spring training? Yeah. Trying mm. to come after our job. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. I'm just a man. Like, it's weird when, you're, when you become a veteran you don't, like you come into spring training ready physically, mm -hmm. but like baseball wise, you're a little bit right. behind. But right. when you're young and you're coming in and you're fighting for this spot, like you come in physically ready, baseball ready, everything, you're on go from the beginning. And so to your, to your point, like the minor, those minor league guys have probably been ready. And they're also obviously really good baseball players as well. But when I see those guys hitting the home runs, I'm hating. I'm hating because I want to hit the home runs too. I just try and save mine for the season. That's it. <laughs> no, I think the to answer his point though, I think it's so cool to see just the talent, man. Yeah, it's cool. Like there's there's never been more like physically gifted players in our game. Like just from top to bottom. I mean, there's kids every time I look up at the board, it's like, man, that kid was born in two thousand three. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a 94. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. like, I thought I was. <laughs> yeah. like, And it's just so cool seeing kids at a young age are able to make an impact. Like, it's not necessarily just they're hitting off another minor league. Or like, they're hitting off a big league yeah. guy, yeah. you know? And it's just so cool to see where the game is going. It's just, you know what I mean? Like, we'd all sit here and gripe about certain things we wish would change. But, like, the talent level, man, is so cool. It's so and fun I, to I watch. I wonder if it's... I mean, I guess that means that the talent level in the minor league has minor leagues has got to be better. Like it's 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 it has to be because these guys are coming up and they're facing these pitchers and it's not phasing them. 
Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. And mm -hmm. so to your point, the game as a whole is probably just taking many strides in a, in a, in a really, really good positive direction. All right, next question. Uh, my name is Bobby from L.A. Bobby from L.A., all right. So my question is, outside of baseball, who inspires you from other sports or other athletes that inspire you to be great? That's a great question. You want me to start? Yeah, you go first this time. Oof. That's a tough one because my favorite player growing up was Nomar. So I was like a huge, huge, huge Nomar fan growing up. Um, I think it's so hard to discount – like what LeBron's done in his career. Uh, just the consistency and longevity is truly amazing. Uh, obviously, I kind of lean more towards the basketball because right. that's yeah. what, I, what I really <laughs> enjoy. I think there's so much to be learned, too, from the late, great Kobe Bryant. I'm sure everybody in here feels the same way. Um, just, seeing, just seeing his mentality. You know, everyone always says the mom menta mamba mentality, but on court, off court, just pretty, pretty freaking special. I mean, definitely listen to plenty of motivational Kobe Bryant videos yeah, sure. to get for me sure. out of funks. Um, so I mean, I would, I would, I would probably venture to say those two, and then trying to the one, the one that I'm just gonna throw that's off the wall. So because I don't know if anybody else says, this, but like Roger Federer. Okay. The reason my mom played tennis, still plays. She was a really, really good tennis player, so I grew up watching a lot of tennis. Oh, okay. And, like, just, like, the gracefulness in which he plays and, like, like I, I'm like, man, I wish I was him. <laughs> you know what That's I mean? That's how like, you play yeah, baseball. Yeah, like, I wish that that, like, his, and from everything I've ever heard, he's just, like, the most awesome human. Just, like, nice, genuinely cares about other people, mm -hmm. listens, always has time for other people, just... Some of those things that you hear about someone that's arguably the best tennis player of all time is like it's just so cool. So I would yeah. we're just gonna go with those three. I'm probably missing somebody, but <laughs> I would say um, off the field for sure. I, I would say LeBron has definitely played a big part in uh, in just kind of how I view things. Mm -hmm. um, D Wade has played a big part. He's a actually a personal friend of mine that has helped me with off the field things. Baseball, name, baseball wise. Name drop. <laughs> he's been I gotta I got it because he he's been that important to me. That's awesome. Like he's really he's really helped me that much. Um on the field stuff, that's that's kind of like your own you know, you have your own baseball guys that, that help you and a lot of it's your own personal experience, but off the field thing, off the field things, I, I would say those two guys athlete wise have been huge, huge influences on the reason why I'm up here today, you know, mm -hmm. stuff, stuff like this. And so um, those two for sure. Any more questions? Oh, right here. Hi, my name is Carter. And my question is, what was it like playing on Team USA Baseball in the World Baseball Classic? Mm. I, I can't answer that one. <laughs> you should answer that. Hey, you, you heard I was talking to D-Row. Uh, oh, heard, yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah, giving yeah. him such a hard time about it. <laughs> So uh, playing in the WBC was probably outside of winning the World Series. It's probably the best experience in, in baseball I probably have ever had, and it, it was so much fun because spring training gets monotonous. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> um, spring training gets monotonous. You know, you're doing the same thing each and every day, and so to break up your spring training flow with games that's one thing but then like games like that where you're talking about a whole country watching or in, in other countries watching you're in, you're in miami and i mean you see it's a sea of just different colors and, and it's it's it was awesome it was like a, a big old it's a, it's a big travel ball tournament you know when you were when you're young mm -hmm. and you go to the, the travel ball and you see Ooh, there's the team over there. There's the team over there. There's the team over there. Ooh, they're good. They're over there. You know, like, that's what it was. So it, 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 was, it was a lot of fun, man, and I, I hope I get a chance to do it again. I want to ask a question on that. Do you think, obviously, wife has won a World Cup, like, thoroughly enjoy watching that. I don't think that, obviously, baseball could take a seven-week hiatus. But what if there was an ability to do the classic – over like a 
10 to 14 day stretch in like during the season if I, where everyone was like truly in full form and shape where everyone goes away for 10 days you have a like would that be doable and do you think it would be a better like do you think it would be better i think i think it's definitely doable i just don't know that teams are going to allow pitchers to do it right but but they allow them to do it before the, I think in the middle of the season and you keep it in guys' rotation, I think that would be – you would get the most elite out of everybody. I think it would be a better game. It'd I really do. It would be a better do. game. It would be all together. More, more guys would participate because they're in the middle of the season anyway. And I agree. to take a 10-day hiatus, like nobody we, – we never have more than one day off. Right. So you give us 10, like – I mean, some guys are – Well, and if you're doing it every four years – I mean, I don't want to, like, ruffle feathers here, but, like, what if that replaced the All-Star game? And instead all, of – I think – You know what I'm saying? You have, we have a four-day break. What if you extend it every – and this is just every four years. You extend it to a seven- to ten-day break. If you did that, you would get – I think it would be baseball. electric. You, it would be – that. I don't think it could be a better – that would be the pinnacle of baseball because you got the best players from each country in the – and they're in the flow of the game. Correct. This is not just spring training, because you got to think the WBC was during spring training, so we were all trying to get our work in. In the middle of an all star game, that's the middle yeah. of the season. Like, we're primed and ready. So, hopefully, hopefully, I hope uh, Rob and MOB is listening, you know, or we can send it to them. Bleach Report, make sure y'all send <laughs> us to them. You know, so, uh, we got another question, my man. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Ricardo. Um, Let me guess, we- you're from LA. Yes, sir. Golly, dude. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, right. Yeah, since yeah. we have two superstar shortstops up here, who are your guys' top five favorite shortstops to watch play? Right now, currently. Yeah. Currently. In the currently. game. Oh, currently in the game. Okay. I'm going to go first. This isn't like a collaborative list. We gotta... Oh, is it a collab? Yeah, let's collab it. All right, let's collab it. You. Excluding... You okay, can't. so we can't. I'm here. You. That's okay. weird. Well, <laughs> there's the first one that comes to my mind is Lindor. Lindor. Yeah. He's one. Yep. Carlos Correa. Yeah, I would put him in the list. I love watching him play. I know Dodger fans. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, guys, that he's a really good shortstop. I don't. Whatever. Those two. Mm-hmm. Um. Sieg, yeah, Seeger. Seeks. I love I love watching Seeks play. I can go with that. Uh, I'm trying to think of shortstops in the game. You know who one of my favorite shortstops hmm. to play, to watch, and I get to watch him every day? Miggy Rojas. Miggy Rojas got some unbelievable is hands. electric at yeah. shortstop. He's got some unbelievable hands. And I get to learn from him. Mm-hmm. So hopefully. I don't know about You I'm know who and everyone's going to boo me but because he's towards the end of his career. But Brandon Crawford, man. Brandon that guy, Crawford. That is, guy can play shortstop man, at an elite level. When I got traded level. to L.A. and I got to see him every day. Wow. Oh, my gosh. It's just like simple. Simple. You he know what I mean? Like flashy, but he makes every single play. Yeah. But as, as bad, so that's five. But There's so many good ones, dude. There are, there are a lot of good ones. But, I mean, I can't. Trey Turner. Trey, yeah, Trey. I didn't think about Trey. Yeah, Trey. I mean, there's so many, so many good ones. But I, I can't not put you on there. Because when I Thanks, man. know that you're coming and, or Dansby's coming, hey, I just get happy because you're, you know, we homeboys or whatever. But I get to watch you play, bro. Like, how you describe Federer playing, yeah. that's how you play shortstop. Thank and it's you. inspiring to people like me. Look, bro, I don't, I'm a rookie at shortstop. So when I go watch YouTube, you know, to, to try and fill my brain with just shortstop plays, you, the people yeah, who just Yeah, put out an instructional on video on YouTube. You can go watch. Yeah, see? You know. <laughs> you know, so, um, but you got to go on there. But there's so many good shortstops, man. I, I can't even so really. Uh, it is a deep. It's deep. It's, yeah. It's a very you got to be like, obviously you got to be good to play shortstop, but you got to be like good to even be considered like a good shortstop. Like you gotta be, I know. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a competitive position yeah. across all sports. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we're leaving somebody great off. So yeah, sorry nobody, guys. Please, I didn't mean please, to. please don't ask me about this. Like, <laughs> get me in trouble. <laughs> all right, we got one more question. Where are we at? We're uh, here. 
my man. Hey guys, uh, Eddie from Phoenix. Oh, yes. Phoenix, oh, that's a mix. <laughs> we mix it in. All right, there we go. Uh, I want to know what you guys listen to pre-game to get you in the zone, ready for the game, and uh, you know what are you guys walking out to, and uh, how did you guys come about that decision? I haven't picked my walkout yet. They usually have a couple different ones. Yeah, uh, for walkout, I uh, I got a couple songs, but I have a buddy at home. He makes me a song every year, so I mix that in. Uh, he went to my high school. He's a musician named Justin Wilson. He uh, he makes me a song every year. And my my little cousin, she is. I want to say she's like 16, 15, mm -hmm. 16. And she's getting into music. And she, she made a song and put it on Spotify or whatever. And so I told her to make me a song. And so I'll use her, her song mixed in with a couple other ones uh, uh, for my walk up. For, for my walk up. Um, but pregame music, I, I listen to, I'm, I've listened to like, Chris Brown and Neo, you know, I try and slow myself down because the game is already speeding me up. So I just, you know, I listen to the to the to the love making music to to get my, you know, to slow my my heartbeat down and I, just get into I, a flow. I bounce around honestly. I I grew up in Atlanta. I listen to music I should not have been listening to when I was like, I mean, I told you, I, my brother and sister are nine and seven years old. Yeah, okay, so yeah, I'm like yeah. seven years old, like thugging it out the little John the East Side boys. I'm like, you know, in the back seat, you know, I'm in the back seat. Uh, so, I mean, I, I definitely still, there's like a little bit of like a ratchet bone in my body. You know, <laughs> I like, I, I really it. do. The first and day I met you, I felt so, it. That is so funny. Uh, I DJ our flights, okay, like okay, I'm our team okay. DJ pretty much. Oh, that means you got a lot and of And okay. Willie Harris, our third base coach, okay, there was yeah, one yeah. time he was like, hey, who playing this music? And I was like, that was somebody was like, dance me. He's like, dance me? He's like, dance me ain't playing that music. And I was like, Willie, it's me. Like, I'm playing it. He's like, hey, you an undercover gangster, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> he says, oh, it's just so funny, man. But I, I mean, I love, That's like, cool. it depends if I'm going – Older Atlanta, I always go Outkast. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, 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 Outkast yeah, yeah, yeah. and Luda. Those yeah, are my two that yeah, I grew up on. Yeah. But if I'm going New Age Atlanta, it's usually Future or Lil okay. Baby. So. Okay. Yeah. You you ratchet. Okay. Yeah. You ratchet. Yeah. I like it though. I, yeah. I, I I I listen to that too, but not pregame. Man, they get me too hype. Get me too. I get too excited. But anyways, thank you guys for uh for coming out. This is our. First, first live audience. Thank you guys thank for, the, for for coming out and uh, supporting on base, Dansby. I know uh, you busy. You got a lot going on, but thank you for coming and spending a little time with your boy. Um, you know, this is a super special um, episode one, season two of On Base. So again, thank you guys, and we will see you guys later on. Appreciate y'all.